Feud on the side. Let's get it started, boys. Map two. And Cloud9 up 1 0 to start off the series here. So now they'll look to build on that, but they're going to have to start off T side on train, which can always be brutal if you're not prepared for it. Tabson starting off the CT side along with not just him, actually him and Cop B both going to try to push inside. Tabson gets one, frags Ooh. into a second two, but it's an even trade at the end of the day, bringing both teams down to three players at full HP. Automatic amongst that chaos though was able to get all the way out towards Evox, so he actually has very forward control. And I think his two teammates are probably going to follow that up down ladder room. Tabson got pushed to the limits there in terms of like criteria. Cloud9 had every box ticked. They put pressure on him, they had double peaked him, they were both shooting, and he still managed to find two kills. Very important. Next has attention taken away from inside. The two players here have already dropped in, and there isn't anyone close up. They're going to see that Keeve is back here, and then it's most likely safe to plant, but now it's a post plant situation, and uh, the, the CTs definitely still have a chance. And so now, as Next and the others are going to push forward here, looking for the retake. Well, Skadoodle knocks out Keeve on the left side of the site very easily. Legia, however, knocks down Automatic, who was trying to wait at Evox so that he could pinch on these players. But that's not going to work out. The good news, though, is that it does waste a lot of time in getting Legia's rotate to come in late. Next, however, will look for now what a 1v2 clutch. He'll jump onto the bomb. He does not have a kit on him, so he's fully committing to this. But goes off it when he hears Rush jumping from the other side, looking for the headshot, but he can't get it done. It's Rush to shut it down and give Cloud9 control over the pistol on train. Hit him with that stat, Blue. What was it that Skadoodle had last last map that was so impressive? It was... Oh, uh, I believe it was in the first half of the last map. He had eight post-plant kills. Eight post-plant kills. In a map that goes 16-13, that comes down to the wire for Cloud9. Skadoodle in the after-plant, plays it safe, hits his shots, doesn't crumble under pressure or with a man disadvantage. He's been coming through, so... Yeah. No, this is this is a player you look to to be very clutch and obviously very safe. That was on T side of the last map that he managed to get that many kills, and Stewie wasn't far behind with five post plant kills as well. He also had Stewie. This is he had six kills on CT side in post plant. So Stewie's always got to have some spotlight, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> well, now showing himself up as just that nice clutch player that we always love to see. This is an interesting standoff at Ivy. You got three. Three levels of the T's, jumping out at different angles. Keeve pushed up, might not get cleared. Yeah, Rush a little bit confused when he sees him spraying. But there's Skadoodle right behind him. Nuts to butts, ready to trade. <laughs> and Skadoodle then will move in to keep those trades rolling, now taking down taps in there. Keeve, as a note though, has been really good at getting these kills, or at least going one for one in these more aggressive positions with a CZ. I think like every time I've seen him have to play a position like that, he's gotten at least one kill. So he's remaining very consistent and is probably Showing up as one of the top players on big so far in this series because of that consistency. You would think that that was absolutely a call out to set up at Ivy like that. Wait for so long, know that big. You're probably going to try to exploit this. That's probably why they picked this map because they are ready to play it though. No. And then all that all they needed to do there was that inner smoke. It acts like on cash where you have the cross smoke on A site because teams will play retake. Same thing with B, where if you throw that ramp smoke down, sometimes if the player's playing in Z as a rotator, they can't they can't know if anybody's actually crossing the site, and that's all you need to do to fake. Big here with God B have uh, just pushed up, realizing that they're not going to have any opponents. Decided to try to save, recycle these scouts, and would love to get like at least one more kill here because next round they'll be looking for three or two or three if they can find them. Remaining very quiet, out, very big. Aren't really going to be attempting too much. They still want to keep a little bit of firepower going into the third round. They still have to look for a full save there. So making sure nobody pushes them for the back calls. Gabi will secure that next. Very, very safely tucked away there. Won't see any additional combat in Cloud9. Get out of the round. Essentially scot free here. Only lose Rush in the initial execute. Yeah, and even though they win the round, like sometimes we talk about bomb plants on rounds you lose. Like bomb plants on rounds you win is, is, is money for your team as well. Yep. Um, yeah, and here's here, obviously a recap of the round that we see being won in the setup, right? Calling out the IV push. Now, what will Big do to reinvent themselves on a on a save round? They have the scout to recycle, but do they stack something? Do they push something? We'll find out right here and now. Everybody's outside. Definitely seems like it's about to become a playground as there are a lot of CT or a lot of terrorists waiting for pushes. Stewie's able to find Tabson early on though as he attempts to hide behind Ebox. So next up to bat is probably gonna be the man himself, Keeve, holding up on top of the blue train, looking for anyone that he might be able to take down. Oh, Stewie sees him though, falling back down in front of the bomb train. Dink Stewie, however, that's gonna send him right back behind coverage. Thankfully, Automatic is able to move out, taking him down, and Tarek, along with Automatic, will continue to just mop up the site here. There we go. Nice, clean take from Cloud9. And once again, they avoid any deaths. It's good that Stewie backs up there, just wanna give away an extra kill over to the guys on big. Yeah, aim looked good. He made the Galil look good. If you can make the Galil look good, that's how you know you're a good player. So, 
Yeah, the long range Galil. He, he hit those shots. Oh, he, they're, they're hanging on to them. They have Russian automatic. Have not upgraded. Everybody's got the nades they want. Uh, it's going to be understood between both teams now. They're both going full force. It's actually a double op set up to kick off the half from Big. Keeve and Legia actually have picked it up. Flashes outside. Everybody eats them. It don't look like anybody has actually pushed out. They had to do an interesting buy in order to get this double op set up. You'll note Legia has a whole bunch of utility and armor behind it, which normally wouldn't be possible, but it's because him and Gob B essentially traded guns that they're able to make that work. So they do sacrifice Gob B's own firepower in order to give Legia a little bit more. Dust actually came up to me before the game and said, watch for that 5-6 smoke, that big love to abuse. I mean, I didn't see a kill come of it, but still opportunities as it is kind of a one way to use it. More times in the half. Now comes the execute now from Cloud9, but it's oh. an absolute shutdown from them. Three very quick kills, and that's the entire A site defense gone in a matter of milliseconds there. God, B, and Key both push back into B here still. There's really no opportunity for them to retake the site, so once again, they're just going to have to post up, look to see if Cloud9 will get a little bit greedy to hunt them down, and besides that, try their best to save these guns. And they swept through that site like the aftershock of an atomic bomb, instantly killing every CT in sight. There was nothing they could do, like there's not a lot to talk about, even for the teammates inside that didn't know what, what just happened, they're, they're not going to be able to question their teammates, like... Gobby is ready to hold that, but unfortunately he can only get one before being traded out by Stewie a second later there. Key's still safe, not sure if they're even going to be able to really get to his position in time without having to take a pretty big risk. And they think he's somewhere in the site anyway, so they're not even checking the right spots here. Keeve should stay safe, which means they keep at least that one up. But they are on the buy save, buy save rotation here, which means Keeve is probably going to have one of the only big guns going into the next round. Keys to victory on that round, obviously. Great spacing, good timing to push out of the choke points at the exact same time. And obviously hitting shots is a big deal too. Did Tarek just spray transfer to the top of the train after killing Train Stopper? That was kind of nuts. I'd have. I'd like to see that. All right. And Big, once again, keeping with their uh, their early pauses here, as they tend to use all of their pauses, as we've seen throughout the course of this tournament so far, and this map is going to be no different. There are no rollover pauses. I don't know if other teams thought that there were, but you don't get to take them in the next game, so you might as well use them up. Yeah. It's always good. And so now, with the pause concluding, we'll jump right back into it. And as I said before... Oh, hold on now. It might not be. Because it just got re-paused. So to give you guys uh, some perspective on the money, the three players are at two players at 9K and, and two with six and one with five. Big, on the other hand, have recycled the op. Good thing for Keeve, as his teammate actually got traded out before the round ended. But the rest of them are, are super low. I don't know. I don't know if they are going to try to buy behind this, but um, they don't really have a lot to gain by by winning this one round. I mean, if they do it, I mean, to go for it is one thing, but they're going up against a fully a fully kitted and loaded terrorist side team, and then they're not even going to have Cloud9 on a save on the on the next round, so... No, we saw what, what Stuby could do with that op, right? We saw that what, what he could do with the op on an eco round, and that the same goes for the, anybody on CT side. So Kiev you know, has been a, a pretty marvelous opper at times, and I think that, you know, it's all, you know this, is a, this is a time where you're just going to expect him to play well, but here's an opportunity for him to go aggressive, have a great excuse to do it, and to try to Try to get to top Cloud9 to play their game because if he does sit in the same in one spot for the entire round, he's just got to hope that um, he's, got, he's just got to hope that they come to him. Yeah, we should. Seems like there's just a, a slight technical issue that we're working through. Yeah, and once that's resolved, we uh, we should be good to jump right back into the game here. So, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what exactly is going wrong, and then. Uh, We'll jump back into it. But a nice 4-0 start from Cloud9. They get through that first gun round in a very clean fashion, too. Only having to rebuy on a couple of players fully. They do have to rebuy, obviously, a lot of utility still, but that's normal. And big, well, while well, it does look like God B has bought in, I don't think the others are going to invest too heavily here. Just upgraded pistols, probably. And then they'll try their best to work it behind the op and see if they can have a round like Stewie had back on the last map there. Although that's going to be hard to repeat. What's up, party people? How's it going? It's nice and dark, so we can't see yeah, the people. We, we, can't, see we can't see the people dabbing the <laughs> dabbing themselves out of existence. Thank goodness. There no, we go. No, 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 no. Don't do it. Don't do it. Love of God. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh no. That's way too many. I'll see you after the show. Plaid shirts. <laughs>
<laughs> so yeah, guys, once again, it is a technical pause that we're currently stuck in here, just working out to solve an issue with one of the teams. And then as soon as it is fixed, the game shall resume. For those that may just be joining us, this is in the Grand Finals. Cloud9 have the map advantage after winning cash and are now at a 4-0 lead at the start of their T side here on train. It's not a whole lot of game tape. And obviously, we've got, uh, we've got, we've got players with the headphones off, so we don't want to talk about it too much. You know, I got all the strats, all the insights. Oh, you've all, yeah, yes. dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you to enlighten us with something. I'm going to invoice them after this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just for the tips, because they can hear you. Yeah. Exactly. Hello, oh, there they are again. What's up? What is this? I don't know. He's having a good time. Another Denver like. dev? Yeah. <laughs> Pretend you're roboting. I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I know what a Denver dab is. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look at some stats here so far as well as we can see. Uh, so he's been having a pretty good series so far here. And in that last map, had a pretty good performance overall here. I believe he's one of the lead players for Cloud9 in that previous map and was able to show up very strong. Keeve, on the other hand, also basically being the Stewie of uh, the Stewie of Big in a lot of ways here, as he's showing up with a lot of those clutch plays. We didn't see him as much in cash, but he's definitely had his moments over this tournament. We really just need to see him come alive in this series, though, if Big want to be able to bounce back here and have a chance to try and take this tournament. Yeah. Can we look at some of the stuff from last map so we don't have to talk about what, what what's going on right now? Do you see anything interesting? Oh well, we had the we had a lot of, like, like I was saying before, a lot of the post plant kills were coming out from Skadoodle, and that carries over for the previous series too. So this isn't like we see sometimes at other tournaments where Skadoodle uh, has like a really good performance in one series, and then kind of kind of dives off a little bit there when we go into another one. He actually carried it through, and specifically in the first map was really good in post plant situations there, and saved Cloth Nine a lot of the times as we saw there, along with Stewie too. It's an interesting discussion because there is, if you look at, you can say that stats aren't useful. And yeah. I think that the, maybe the stats that we use aren't quite that useful, but um, I think that there is an argument for looking for better stats to use. Yeah. Right? There's a, everything Everything can, can be boiled down to numbers. It's just about which numbers you do find. So it is really cool to have stats like that, like post plant kills, which are actually cr quite critical. They're uh, pretty close to even just clutch kills, like 1vx situations, yeah. that in terms of how valuable they are. So. That's interesting. I, and, you know, looking at trends as well. One player that actually had a really good map on the last map uh, that we didn't really get to talk about too much was actually Got B, who for a lot of the time was kind of leading the charge. I think Keeve managed to catch up to him towards the end of the game, but he was actually probably the top player for Big coming out of that first half there. Um, and then, like I said, he, he dived off just a little bit on the CT side, but still had like a really impressive T side there as, as one of the leaders of this team, too. I think uh, Twigris tweeted out that he, like, it was like he tweeted out that Got B and uh, one other player shouldn't be the ones to frag. Right. They've, yeah. they, you know, they've got Keeve, they've got Nex, and I think that um, that might be a bad thing. Maybe Gob, not that Gob can frag, but that his teammates aren't outshining him when he's definitely in a position as an IGL to pick up a lot of the slack and also throw a lot more grenades, drop guns, and so forth. Yeah. In a lot of ways, it's like it's kind of a it's it is like a bad omen when you see the IGL doing like yeah. really well, like like ten plus kills with the rest of his teammates. It's like okay, this should not be happening because normally we don't see this. Normally he's pretty close to the bottom of the scoreboard, so it's a bit of a uh, differential. One stat that I've always been interested in seeing that. I don't think we've been able to capture too much yet has been uh, stats related to nades, which is like a topic that doesn't get discussed a whole lot, like specifically like nade economy, right? You think about how many times players go down with like a full stack of nades. Mm -hmm. uh, we really, a lot of, a lot of, a lot of ways we don't keep track of that kind of stuff. And I feel like that's, that's pretty important information to see like how much money might, might get wasted in rounds and just seeing how much, uh, how many players don't use their nade kits. anti ecos for example, are around where you don't want to, you're not going to want to like have too many nades or have too many nades because you don't want to use too many nades. Let's say you go like A main on cash, for example. You yeah. want to molly out all the spots. Well, you don't need like a full nade set to do that. And sometimes you can just be wasting money and end up throwing grenades frivol frivolously. And that does, you know, these things are expensive, right? They do actually um, cost you, cut, take out of a future round. So. I definitely agree that team, sometimes people buy too many when they don't need them. It's, it's, it's obviously very subjective, but it would be cool to see if we could find a way to figure out uh, how to detect what's like an impactful nade and what's like a wasted one too. But obviously that's very complex. However, as you can see, folks, we're back in the game. So let's get started with this. This big are going to be on pretty much just an upgraded pistol round behind that op, but obviously they are going to have quite a bit of rifle power over on the Cloud9 side of things. So they've got an advantage. However, Keeve shows up first with the op shot. Automatic just that nice, clean headshot there on a tap 
Stops him though. Knocks him out. And they're gonna continue that wrath as Automatic pushes out over towards Evox. Knocking out Keeve. Stewie and Tarek with additional pickups here too. Leaves only the AWP alive now in a 1v4 situation. They've essentially gonna have him surrounded here in a few moments, but he's trying to circumnavigate him and actually gets to a good position there. Knocks out Tarek. Is he gonna expect the one in team A? No, he won't. So Skadoodle knocks him out. And that's number five for Cloud9 now. I think that was the round where we saw Keeve get the AWP, and I, I, mean, I guess uh, Legia recovered it, tried to go for some type of kill, and it seemed like the fight really did come to them. They were outside and waiting, but this is a very powerful position, Top Blue. I actually made a video talking about how once you're up there, you can see so much of the site that makes it very difficult, and you can bully sometimes, bully people into the spots and corners from just from just standing up there for just a moment. So, uh, very powerful. It's all also dangerous as a watchtower. All eyes are on you as well. But, oh wow, that the Malta, very important for Gob that it did land. He would have got opt otherwise. Stewie hung out for a couple more seconds. Spots his two players as well. In fact, he might have hit the player. Oh. No, he didn't actually. So now we do see that upper position established, but he's not checking the backside. So Keeve is allowed to go right up on top there, taking down Stewie early on in the round. Stewie was like a, uh, just a statue in that position. He was so convinced that nobody had rotated in yet. And I think, and he did just miss it. So I wonder if there was some info there that he had. Well, Max got to be a little bit careful there too, but he sees the shadow of Taps and, and is going to be able to catch him running out trying to take him down. So there's the trade, brings it back down to a 4v4. A little bit of a heavy cost on HP there on automatic, but at least it gets the job done for now. Uh, okay, Legia calling out. Nope, that there is no Ivy presence. Tons of information now gained. Has actually fallen back and knows just off of this that he won't have to worry about Ivy for a minimum of 10 seconds. Here he can even opt from it, not have to watch his side. Very powerful spot. He's got the bomb drop too, so with no additional smokes moving in anytime soon, Cloud9's roster is going to continue to get torn apart here. Next with another pickup against Rush, leaves only Tarek alive, but look at this. He's got a sneaky little flank moving in. He's going to have to act fast, however. As a second he fires off, they're going to know where he's at. Gets that first kill, looking for the players that were out over here at the bomb tree before, but they have now moved. And going up top, he's trying to control this spray, but I think he was still partially on the ladder there too. So it makes it a little bit difficult. Next will take him down, and big after five rounds straight from Cloud9 will now finally get onto the board. All right, you like to see it. They get that opening frag. Keeve with a very important kill on a Stewie, who was so intent on, on playing off that information. And then everything coming down to the ops, really, which is really good for big who also save enough players that they can hang on to these, even recover an AK, and uh, put Cloud9 in a little bit more of a precarious spot, but, uh, and, and I think are at risk of, uh, are kind of at risk of getting reset at this point, but still are in a great position because of their double op setup. Nice and found for Skadoodle though, catches Keeve at the beginning of this time, and Stewie is gonna find another kill. Taps, who might be the only hope for big in this round as he's gonna push in, gets one, he's got the other player stuck in the corner, but no, Tarek, he comes out on top, knocking him out of the round, and now leaving just two up and running for big. They try to find impact, but Stewie strikes once again, and everything is left to Gobby in a 1v3 clutch. And I think they already have a pretty good idea that he's gonna try to sneak through these back lanes here. Looked like he was trying to toss the smoke, but just ends up peeking right into Skadoodle. So gives an easy closing kill to Cloud9. And now once again resets Big's losing bonus. Uh, suddenly you see such a great round from Big and Cloud9 give him that open and they just take it away so quickly. Overall, they just dominated in all facets here. And even having the read on the rotate in as Stewie throws his small top down, even though Gob walked the whole way, it puts Big in such a tough spot. There's only going to be one up, save for Cloud9, but that's really all they're going to need. Big have to... I'll stick with this half armor that they have on Gob B. Four stack outside, or you know, four just playing outside as he normally would. And Gob B spotting inner to make sure that his teammates don't have to rotate over quickly. Keeve is going to sneak himself forward here, looking for an opportunity to try and get another early kill. Remember, like I said before, he's had a pretty good track record with these. So we'll have to see if he can successfully take him down. And once again, comes out on top of the duel there. So he's going to be able to move out, scavenge a rifle for his kill. And now even the fight back up to a 4v4, and also Automatic just getting destroyed on the way in there. I think he actually got hit by Skadoodle's own op from the looks of it there. Looks like he crossed out in front just as Skadoodle was about to take a shot. And that brought his health pool down low and made it easy to knock him out. Sometimes you got to make a blood sacrifice, man, to power <laughs> up. Yeah, so now in the meantime, at least amongst the confusion, Tarek was able to quickly walk down ramp and B. And he's got this forward position held. It'll get smoked off. There is Legia hiding out right in the corner, and Tarek is trained on that, waiting for him to push back in. The CTs will also toss their own smoke, though, and that is going to kind of kill Tarek's position. He has to fall back into a new spot, or at least wait for these CTs to push out on it. They're not so convinced, though. The CTs actually, I think, are just going to give this one up and let Cloud9 take the round. They're going up 7-1 to one here. Yeah, that's a, that's a big scoreline. Uh, you know what? And I think uh, if I'm big here, I definitely, 
I play the game, I make it seem like I'm gonna hang out because I don't want Cloud9 to come and hunt me before the round is nearing a close, and then I just make my way out, but the entire time with the intention of falling back to spots like Ivy, it's, uh, it's, if, they, if they do save these two guns, they maybe, they maybe can put together a buy next round and not have to double save. So that, that could be a big win for them. So overall, pretty successful. Maybe Eco, you could say, for big. Cloud9, on the other hand, happy to take the round, the bomb plants, put some money in their pocket. And go into next round, all, only having to buy up nades. Oh, they actually aren't. They're just going to take the rifles. Uh, those rifling players are going to half armor. And then everybody else is just going to get some pistols. So uh, the big are actually hedging their bets here. And Cloud9, well, with them having to go up against that, they might have to change their playstyle just a tad. Next, even going forward there to take the aggressive position instead of ladder, which we haven't actually seen Big doing a whole lot of that aggressive ladder position just yet. Some teams have made this a staple, where they just constantly push that player forward as long as they have the gun power to do so. But I don't think we've seen it as much from Big here, and we're only just now starting to see these players pushing forward to that position. And they don't even keep it, too. He moved away from it outside, closer towards e boxes. They're more just going to hold aggressive positions. He did move in later there when he sees them trying to move in to get control, but they are really just playing with him right now, trying to get info. See, so next try to go up with him. But, uh, it, was, it is important. They recognize that if they're going to play train, they, they recognize the importance of having ladder. Five and I are playing the game perfectly. Next, uh, next, not here anymore. It's going to be rough. They've actually receded behind the smokes and taps in in the only favorable spot. It's going to have to land these frags. Oh, instantly gets hopped off the top of the bomb train. There's Keev once again with that CZ, though, but it seems to be the only kill that Big has been able to accomplish is just like that. Once again, Cloud9 clear out the site very quickly and leave it all under Gob B in a 1v4 with just CZ and armor bought up. Tarek already positioned to stop him, so there you go. Another clean closeout from Cloud9, and they're in a strong position with the lead. 8 to 1, massive amounts of cash built up here, too. They have three players over $10,000. And I think they're going to remain that way after they buy on this round. Man, these guys are actually insane. They're, they're, they're making Big look like a, a much lower tier team, even though Big would stomp most competition on this planet. So very fantastic showing so far from Cloud9 here on train. Map 2, tons of money to work with. A lot, lot of rounds left in this half as well to make it get really ugly. I mean, we, they, they have stomped in this, in this uh, tournament all, a couple of maps. Like, I think leading up until the Mel Sports, until the Mel Sports match, they'd only drop five rounds of the two best of ones. Mm -hmm. And it feels like we might be we might be getting to the scoreline like this at the end of the map. And that's a real Monka S for Big. <laughs> So Big is going to have to look for a way to come back. They do take the pause that are obviously, so now we're jumping right back into the action. And Big, well, with a big buy, you're going to have to look for some way to impact here against Cloud9. Cloud9, though, will split their players up, and since they know it's a gun round, they're going to play it relatively passively, even though Stewie takes that very aggressive control of ladder. This time, Big just keep their players back. They don't put the player in ladder room early on, so that is going to let them get that early control in ladder. If you're watching, don't give up hope. We can see that Big definitely have some... Uh, what that that Molotov just not bounced off the wall or why did I think it, it hit I think it? it hit that like pipe that's or the the ventilation shaft that's mm. sitting in the ceiling there and I don't think it can actually spread from that point so it was a whiffed molly yeah it's interesting to do that you delay a little bit but you don't really I don't know, wonder what you actually accomplish not much in that case automatic's gonna go out quickly blinds Keeve and takes them down Stewie with a second entry too but look at this from Legia gets a forward position but he can't transfer the spray well enough now Nex is gonna have to try to hold here but he as well can only get that single individual kill and now Gabi hold on now he's gotten all the way up to the bomb train can move it can deny Ooh. the plant gets that kill quickly falls back looking for players oh, oh! and he goes back down to find Tarek as well now it's just a 1v1 no! and he can take what down Rush to give the round to Big finally giving them another one. What is that? The madman, the 1v3, falling off the bomb train to get the second frag and making it look so easy in the clutch. What a monster. And that's the, that's the job of your inner player, is to come outside as your teammates have all been eviscerated and have to clean up. I mean, that's his job. They know he's coming from Z2. So to do it in a 1v3, it's not something you see every day on train, not on outside. And it's from Gob B again, too. 
The leader showing up in strong suits here for Big. Like, he has got to be careful, though, because Rush is going to push right past that smoke to take him down at Ivy. And the A main players are also finding impact here to Skadoodle with two very quick kills. Once again, leaves Big out to dry as Gob B is going to be stuck over in the B site with nothing that he can do. It's a 1v5. He does have the AK, of course, but now with his team probably getting reset again, he has to save that so they can try to find some impact in the next rounds. Why, is this, why are my teammates testing me? They really <laughs> believe that I can do this? <laughs> And no, it's just the job is a little bit too big, man. And that was a one round, that was one round on an island in a 1v3. So they don't have much money to work with. Absolutely dire straits were big for the rest of this half. They've got nothing going for them, man. It's good to hit this nice shot as well. That was pretty nuts. Just no momentum at all being found for big here. And like we said, full eco in this round here. All USP, so it should be just an easy walkover for Cloud9. We have seen upsets like this in the past, but in this kind of a match, and at this state of the tournament, it's going to be unlikely for that to happen. Here you go. You can already see it. Cloud now getting a nice, quick cleanup, bringing it all down to Keeve. He did get a flank opened up here as he was able to push freely from Ivy, but the problem is they might just expect this with him clearing out the site. And yep, there we go. Tarek turns himself right around. So the second Keeve walks in, Tarek will be trained on that, ready to stop him. Yeah. Just as you mentioned. Oh. Oh. Okay, Keeve. He's showing up. And now he's got the AK, so this is going to become... Oh, oh my god, Skadoodle! What? <laughs> <laughs> that shot came from absolutely nowhere. Rush didn't even realize it happened at first there, too. He even looked a little bit surprised. Nobody is safe, man. You cannot hide. Jesus. You have been visited by Mr. Skadoodle. Let's see that. Let's see the replay on it here. That's oh, all perfect prediction. Right onto his head, too. Oh my god. Nicely done. And now it's going to be another quick execute from Cloud9 here. Big still on a partial eco. They do buy a pistols at least, but Cloud9 continue to tear these apart. Taps in, he'll get one kill, but quickly runs out of ammo. And once again, it's brought down to Gabi, who, while he does get a flank, they're probably going to spot this. Or at the very worst, he'll get just <laughs> one kill. Yep, can't even get that one. Automatic takes him down. It's Cloud9 domination here, as they're continuing to push the scoreline further and further into their favor. We go into the last two rounds of the half, and they have an 11-2 lead. Oh man, at what point are they not even competing against Big anymore, but just trying to get the most ADR? Like, are they just competing against themselves at some point? They make it, they make these outside hits just, I mean, just go off without a hitch, first of all. They're, they're doing everything they need to do, and, and Big are, I think, are happy to take some fights. Maybe the counter needs to be, need to be a little bit stronger, as it doesn't seem like they're getting stopped in their choke points. Here's a Molotov to go off, but is it only a false exec from Cloud9? They haven't actually committed to anything, so... Initial nades being released by Big is going to be pretty tough for them. However, getting an opening kill on Tcon, that's a huge win. Taps in also retaining ladder control. Yeah, so we can't see automatic just dive right down there. It looks like they are setting up for a quick totem pole drop. However, so Rush he will be on top of it. Once again, though, Big have played this uh, play ladder in an interesting way. You could see Tabson taking it before and able to get the kill with it, but he doesn't stay there. He doesn't continue to hold that control as we so often see other teams do. He actually backs up to the bomb train and is going to let Cloud9 drop down to take it. Okay, so come on, Big. We got the 5v4. We have outside control. We know that no one is no longer in ladder. And, or that anyone is. And uh, and even though Cloud9 have peaked down there again, they're, they're, they're moving their talents towards inside. Two players here to hold up. And they don't have to force any over rotations. So they, this should be enough to hold. Uh, not a lot of nades to stop a plant, though, is the thing. So we might see a smoke down the ramp in inner execute and post plant situation, potentially. Very quiet, though, as Cloud9 look for an opportunity to at least bring it back down into an even bout here. And Big are even starting to suspect something. They have the second player rotated in. Two other CTs playing very close to the bomb train. At a second's notice, they oh. can rotate. Great nade, too. Just absolutely destroys the HP of three players from Cloud9. And it looks like Big have full control over the situation here. Unless these last two can turn it around. A missed shot from Keeve is actually going to let Cloud9 cross to the site, though, and go for a plant. So they get at least to the post-plant scenario, but Skadoodle peeking wildly there. Gives up his chances. Stewie as well just goes for a wild battle and we'll end up dying there after one trade. Yeah, it doesn't expect to let the bomb go down and great use of the few nades that they did have to get all that damage in. Those HEs going down on the lower ramp, perfectly timed, called out Cloud9. And it's nice to see that Big are able to turn a 5v4 into a round win. I mean, you always want that stat line to hold true, but in this game, it has been an issue for them to get that 5v4 in the first place. Cloud9 aren't giving them the frag easily. Their ops have been on point. 
on it. And of course, they get a very big full buy for the final round of the half. As we can see, double up setup moving in for them. Excuse me, triple up setup there moving in for them as Tarek and Automatic invest along with Skadoodle. So they're going to test this theory, see if they can make it work. Tapson having himself pushed very far forward, but it's actually Nex that gets the first kill. Won't be long before he's been traded. And Rush also holds off a successful Ivy hold and then goes back in for seconds, taking down Legia. Tapson ready to hold, and the player up on top of the boost here, just trying to escape death. He almost trades the kill, actually. Now Tapson has the op, and he's going to look to complete his job over here. What Stewie just barely escaping by bouncing off of his now dead teammate. You have been visited by Spider-Man. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Tapson dude. will end up getting taken down though, and with Rush finding that kill, it's a 12 to 3 lead at halftime for Cloud9. Four rounds separate their current scoreline from tournament victory. I don't know who that guy is behind Cloud9, but we're keeping him. <laughs> I think his name's Ian. Ian. If I remember correctly from the Twitter profile. Hey guys. Crowd's <laughs> 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 chanting his name now. Ian. <laughs> It'd be a real shit. <laughs> Man, it'd be a real shame if that wasn't his name. <laughs> Shout out to all the Ians, man. <laughs> Any Ians in the crowd? Not a single Ian. No, someone raised his hand. Okay. Wow, man, that's nuts. They got 12, they got 12 rounds and made it look so easy. They were, it was too fast to follow the action, dude. Like, they were getting kills with, like, different choke points all the time. We see the three rounds that big one they weren't they weren't in a row they don't have a pistol to at least pad the pad the score line at all they, they won they won three rounds all separated by three round wins from cloud nine like there was just no chance t side as a maybe a second lease on life for big though it's a it's a completely different it's a completely different ball game and, and you, you'd expect them to have like a, a pretty solid t side i mean we all want counter strike we want a map three right we we definitely want this to go the distance and, uh, and for Big to make it competitive. We know they're better than that. So let's hope they can pull out some great T stuff here for us and put on a show. They're going to have to start off with a pistol victory then. That's been tough for them as Cloud9 have controlled a majority of the pistols played so far. As we get into it, Big will start it off with a bit of pressure towards Ivy. And Rush does see the latter player there. So he's going to take a shot at him. They don't really have anyone watching towards T-Con though. So that player is free to walk out. But Automatic, oh, moves in. Gets a quick headshot and a second one. Looking for number three. He's going to get dinked. He's still able to do a little bit of damage for the backside. In the meanwhile, Tarek takes the fight at the bomb trade. It's all left to next and now 1v4. He can't get that second kill though. And Tarek takes him down, securing both of the pistols in the map for Cloud9. <laughs> Why do I have a feeling that people are going to be happy, even if this map ends very soon? Oh my gosh. What a dominate, dominating performance from Cloud9. Insane. All these pistol headshots being hit. Uh, just crack spotting Ivy and then peeking out at the right moment. Automatic finds two. Ooh. Wow, man. Tarek even had players running inter interference on him to make those shots harder, and he finds three. It's an obstacle course. Three rounds to win. Big have decided to force up. Automatic, I mean, excuse me, Cloud9 are going to expect it. Yeah, no plan, so there's really no choice here for Big, especially at a scoreline like this. They basically just have to try and force it, even if it's very dire straights here. They got to give them some chance to get back into the game, and it would start here. <laughs> Rush, though, is going to send next flying, makes him do a backflip off the ladder, and Tarek will follow it up with one of his own. Keeve, along with next, two of the biggest players from Big, in terms of statistics, have already gone down here. Tarek moves in towards ladder there, takes out Legia, and it doesn't seem like this force... Well, we see that one kill, but so far, that's the only kill that's been found. They're going to look for more. Rush definitely knows there's a guy in T-Con, so he's going to play this very cautiously and smartly, too, as he's able to make sure he executes Scott B. Tabson gets the second now, so hold on here now. Let's see if he's going to be able to get any more than that, at least make it expensive for Cloud9. It'll be his goal here. Nate will bring his health pool down even further. They did pick up a FAMAS. I'm not sure if he noticed it, though, but it's going to be irrelevant anyway. Stewie finishes off the round and puts Cloud9 at 14-3. to three. Cloud9, I mean, Tabson absolutely... Uh, beast with the deagle he is he's gotten some insane clips in the past but it wasn't quite enough i mean that's you know they knock a couple players out but these are these are guys who are willing to upgrade two rounds to close this whole thing out and uh big have decided to glock save here because they believe in themselves they don't want to they don't want to force and put themselves in a position to have two bad rounds they're gonna they're gonna let it go at least down to one 
One final hurrah on a rifle. Unfortunately, though, that one final hurrah is going to have to extend for now 12 straight rounds if we assume Cloud9 take this round here, which is a pretty safe assumption. Stewie already picking up two kills, and he's not even going to get overwhelmed here. Over to the Deagle, where he finally goes down, but just a moment later, Tarek trades that. They do get the plant at least, but Legia now dead on the ground, secures it for Cloud9. They're going up 15 to 3, and it's tournament point for the North Americans. Tarek's praise easy on the wall. <laughs> We've got money to buy. The, bu the, the bomb plant was big. <laughs> no, man. The USA chant. It's, it's pretty loud. I don't know. It's, it might be overwhelming for big to not, not have just the score line against them, but also uh, the, the favor of the stadium. Yeah, like you were saying, we do have that full buy from big arm to the teeth here. Ready to take on Cloud9, but it's their one and only chance to stop them, as otherwise they take full control of Train, and an absolute shutdown will win this tournament. Automatic's gonna get very aggressive. Though. Look at this, he even goes through a nade. Oh they my. haven't seen him yet, but he hasn't been able to spot any of these players. Keep oh! checking! Oh! Realize it though, and on the wild swing, knocks out Automatic. What the heck? This guy has like eight eyes. How the hell did he see that? <laughs> well, just got that game sense. Sees that coming, and now Tarek, he's gonna push forward aggressively, look for a trade, stall the cross, and knows they have ladder control. Call that out to his teammates, and Rush is actually not gonna stay forward in that very open position. That's too much of a risk to his own safety right now. He'll instead fall back, they're trying to play train yards. They don't really have the numbers to defend this outer site, and you can just see them crumbling to pieces the second the execute moves in. Stewie's able to trade, but that's now put him as the only player left alive here for Cloud9, and he won't stay that way for long. He gets knocked out by Keeve, and Big finally claim another round. Oh man, that makes me sad to see that they lost that pistol. I mean, we're on match point, but that was a pretty compelling round. Cloud9 suddenly have to save. There was some damage dealt in the previous that put them in this position. Now, Big have a long road back to 16. I mean, it, it would, it's, it's, wow. it's tumultuous. What was that? That was the, uh, that was the op shot that came out there from Keeve. It didn't even look like he could fully see that player from Klan and that it snuck out Ivy either, so yeah. it makes it even more impressive. Uh, but it, it is a save. Another, another opportunity to build a bank, which will only go so far when you're perpetually on match point, but it is something. Yeah, Cloud9 with an 11 round cushion to work with. There's no way they're going to be worried about anything just yet. Obviously, these rounds are a bit of a long shot for them to close out. You can already see, okay, automatic. He at least beats out Cobb Bees. He tries to go for a quick drop at ladder, but once again, will very quickly get traded out, as expected in rounds like this. Next, finding that additional kill, and with Tapson closing out onto Stewie there, it's big going up to five. Just uh, 10 more rounds to go, and we're in OT. He always makes it sound so easy. <laughs> Will it be an outside exec one more time? It's actually going to be another half buy for Cloud9 one more time. So they've got some needs to do. It's a little bit better than it was last round. But uh, but, it, but but obviously, it's a, it's a round that Bigger looking forward to closing out, moving forward with. And it seems like uh, they are throwing some stuff outside. I don't know if they'll follow up with actual players. Instead, they've uh, played it pretty passively, making sure that no one can get prenated. Let's see here. Keeves on the hunt, sees the player up on top, and. Quickly knocks him out. Goodbye to Stewie. Already big. An early advantage to play off of here. The rest of Cloud9, they did leave the inner bomb set completely open for the taking. It was a full gamble stack here on A, hoping that Big would execute towards it again. But I believe they're going for a slow crawl down ramp right now, and they're going to notice that B's wide open. So they'll be able to walk in there. Easily secure it. Even these rotates are going to be unsuccessful. You can see Skidoodle's health pool just getting melted down from the mollies there. And there really won't be much room for Cloud9 to do anything here, except set up outside the sites and maybe look for a few exit kills. That's all they would like. That's all they would really, really like here. And, um, yeah, not going for it in this situation. It's not going to be a lot of hunting either. I mean, it's definitely not hunting season for the T's. No, they're in far too delicate of a position right now to be able to do that. They need to make sure that not only do they obviously keep winning these rounds, but if they lose too many players, their buys are going to get a little bit scrappy, so they want to avoid that and make sure they stay at full, you know, four AKs in the op or even double op set up along with full utility too. Keep these buys as strong as possible. And Legia actually does decide to test himself a little bit here as they move further out of the site. Rush is going to be sitting here, waiting to take the challenge, but Tapson denies that. Goodbye to Rush. Well, we see that these players are fierce, man. They have it in them somewhere. Somewhere, maybe maybe very deep down. Yeah, maybe their arms aren't long enough for how deep down they have to reach, but uh, they, they, they need to dig if that's the case. So 
Hopefully they have a shovel. And I don't know where this analogy is going, but we know that Big have very little chance of winning this game, but have a ton of money to actually do it round by round at least. You were stretching on that one up here a little bit. But we get into this next gun round here. Cloud9 back up to full strength and even better strength to some degree, as now they have that double op setup established. Automatic and Skidoodle will be picking it up this time on the CT end. And for Big, well, obviously they're still at full strength too. They're going to have to fight, however, early control. Tarek, you can see, is going to be playing towards E-Box and Ladder. It's kind of shifting around, so not committing to either one, but Rush what? gets the double through one of the players, possibly, there as he takes down Next, is able to eliminate him. And just like that, Cloud9 have a 5v3. And look at how much HP he had to survive that fight with just a single health point at the end of that 1v2 there. Nicely done from him, and it might have just put Cloud9 on a pedestal to win this tournament. Rush with one more. They look for number four. Tarek's going to have to do it, but no, he gets traded out there by by Keeve. Now it's a 2v3, but Big have taken so much damage. Leggy low, he makes it work though. Gets out from E-Box and finds Skadoodle. And now we've been even back out. Automatic is still looking for his possibility to find a trade kill too, but he's gotta be so, so careful. As his teammate is not nearby, he's waiting for them to fully commit to this bomb train so that he can jump back into the site and surprise these big players. Perfect flash on the Skadoodle. And did Leggy just see his back there? He's looking for him, and he's gonna try to move towards it. Automatic misses the shot. He's now low at 19 HP. Leggy holds on, gets that kill. Stewie comes back in though and trades it. So we're in a 1v1 potentially to decide the tournament. Keep. Oh! Oh! Gentlemen, it's Cloud9 that take it in map number two. 16 to six is the final score. And with a 2-0 victory, they are the Dream Hack Astro Open Denver champions. Congratulations to Cloud9. And let's just let them lambast in this moment. It's a beautiful moment for them there as they were able to show up with a great tournament victory and a very, very strong performance as well on both map number one and two. You're getting their congratulations out and everything as well there, but what a final from Cloud9 and a semi-final performance as well just to get here against Mouse and overcome so much, so what a day for them. Gentlemen, your DreamHack Astro Open champions here in Denver are Cloud9. All right, guys, let me get some thoughts. Tim, I haven't spoken. Okay, Tyler. Well, I'm going to speak to all of you. Tyler, let's start with you. Just brief thoughts on the event. It was great. Thank you uh, for all the fans for coming out. Uh, we love the support. Um, the fans make the game 100 times better. Uh, we love it when we clutch and stuff. The fans super loud and uh, makes us pumped. So thank you. And Tim, like I said, I haven't spoken to you, so it'd be great to hear from you as well. Um, yeah, that was great. Short and sweet. Rush, you said at the start of the event, anything less than first place would be a shame. It would be not what you came for. Luckily, you ended up in first. Yeah, we did it, man. Everyone put insane. My teammates are nuts. What can I say? And Tarek, anything from you? Thanks, everyone, for coming out. I appreciate everyone's support. Proud of my team, and thank you all. Guys, you are looking fantastic. What a way to win this tournament. Thank you so much. And congratulations one final time. That will be it from us on the stage. A big shout out to all of you in the crowd. You've been fantastic. An outstanding performance here by Cloud9. And you really just got to look at the, the, the look on their faces, the expression. You know how much that this means to them. And personally, Congratulations. Dude, I don't think I've ever heard Skadoodle talk on stage before in my life. And you probably won't ever again. <laughs> yes. That's just the way it works. There you have it. Automatic's response was just, mm, that's so, it, that was so Timothy Ta that I, I was blown away. So As for the game itself. That's actually important too. Train was exactly what we expected. We talked about on desk. I thought they were just going to rush outside basically every round. It felt like they did that the first 10 rounds of T-side. Automatic flying out mid, just getting frags everywhere. Big couldn't stop it. They were just outclassed. 
Yeah, Rush, who has been a little bit quiet throughout the tournament. You know, he showed up big actually in this series on CT side on cash, and he, you know, came here as well, which goes to show that this team's, you know, fully skilled. Everyone can really pitch in, and, you know, even guys who were quiet earlier in the tournament stepped up to the plate at the end. But I think that if we're talking MVPs here, I think, I think that's definitely something we got to do. I'll give it to Stewie. I, I think that Tarek's a very close runner, though. You could really argue either one. And, like, Skadoodle definitely deserves some props. He played excellent this tournament. Yeah, I think Stewie's undoubtedly for me the MVP, but Tarek is the honorable mention. He is in-game leading, and he put up insane numbers in this tournament. I, I think he was close to, before the final, 1.4 rating for the total tournament. So he, he was going hard in this in this tournament, but Stewie is the MVP for me. You know, some of you guys at home are probably hating to see this, but uh, you know, I'm sure that Cloud9 is basking in all of this glory. Let's take a look now at the numbers and the statistics as this one breaks down. Guys, I mean, your heavy hitters are, are pretty apparent. Yeah, I mean, it's a tight frag distribution in this final. Also, the number that's not on the screen, but it has been up throughout this tournament is the amount of pistol rounds that Cloud9 have won this tournament. I think they ended the tournament 13-1 and one in pistol rounds. I mean, that's always giving you good starts on your economy and momentum and, and just helping you have an easier time through games. That, that's, that's remarkable to have that many pistol round victories. Yeah, and looking at the stats in, in the finals, Tabson showed up, but more importantly, Nex. Um, that's a guy that has had real consistency issues over the last few years and he showed up big time in the final he's known for being a group stage player and sometimes choking a little bit but he played really well this tournament so props to him i mean overall an, an interesting path here for uh big to have taken to the finals nonetheless and for cloud nine to have pretty much just come out and, and stepped on uh, mouse sports leading up to this point really hats off to them both yeah and i think this was like what was supposed to happen in Montreal in Cloud9's mind. You know, they went to Montreal, they were they had this super roster and they were expected to go deep and win the tournament and didn't quite work, but that's okay. They came here, they were more prepared here. They looked strategically on point. They, they, they didn't mess up and execute here and there. So they're, you know, they're not polished, but they're on the right track. Oh, absolutely. And I think that when you combine this with E-League Premier, as long as they can keep this up, they will eventually start rivaling Liquid in the NA scene as being like, you know, fighting with them to see who really is number one. You still give it to Liquid for now, probably because of the head-to-head -head matchup in the Epicenter qualifiers. But I think that later on, it, towards the end of this year and going into next year, I think that that could be a really heated rivalry, which we really haven't had one like that in the NA scene for a while. There's like two very clear top teams in the region who are also quite good internationally. Well, I mean, you have uh, uh, several teams that are basically going to be in the shadow of those top teams for the foreseeable future uh, because there is such a, a variety, such a skill gap, I, I do believe. Yeah, and it's unfortunate that, I mean, there was a few years, 2015, 2016, where you had maybe like three or four NA teams, but none of them were really tier one. They were like, you know, there was mm -hmm. short stints of Cloud9 and, and the summer, and they, you know, you, you could see some greatness, but the rosters weren't as stacked as they are now. Now it's there's two clearly outskilling teams, and then Liquid and Cloud9, and the rest are kind of just falling by the wayside. CLG not quite there, Energy not quite there. This, I don't know what they're doing with their roster every week, so. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, it's just NA things, right? Yeah. Uh, I suppose it's uh, like a deck of trading cards around here. Well, either way, our next stop is Dreamhack Winter in Jantrping, Sweden. That is December first through third. Uh, James, you've been to a Dreamhack Winter, have you not? I have not. I wish really? I have. No way. It's I've been to Dreamhacks, but never Dreamhack Winter. That was always a dream of mine. Well, there's always a chance. You never know. Hey, there is, hey. it's not too hey, late. Hey, hey. It's what, not you, too what late. are you saying? I'm saying it's not too late for you to be in Jantrping alongside. Don't but, get my hopes up. Yeah, well, you know, it's not my decision to make either way. Either way, I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to the sponsors that make this all very much possible and Astro, Monster Energy, Zowie, Corsair, and Intel. Of course, we cannot forget about strafe.com, the esports app that's really got it going on. Uh, make sure to head over there, check it out so you can follow along with your favorite players, teams, fans. I guess you can follow along with fans. Either way, I want to go ahead and give a quick shout out here to the staff on the production, the tournament admins, as well as Risk, the Bears, Blue, Launders, Paula, Dust Moret, Hayes, and from myself, signing off here at the DreamHack Astro Open in Denver. We'll see you next time.